Everything Dinosaur, in collaboration with our chums at Collector, have recently announced the third of the new Collector prehistoric animal models for 2024. It's a Velociraptor, specifically a Collector Deluxe 1 to 6 scale Velociraptor model representing Velociraptor mongoliensis. Now you may have seen an image of the work in progress figure. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually show you one of the early prototypes? Well, stick around, we'll tell you more. Hi, Everything Dinosaur here, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the third of the new for 2024 Collector prehistoric animal models, the Collector Deluxe 1 to 6 scale Velociraptor Mongoliensis a figure that commemorates 100 years since its genus was first erected. And this is one of the early prototype figures. Now, it's approximately about the same size as what the final figure will be. It measures 32 centimetres long. And that magnificent, pinacious tail plume will stand about 16 and a half centimetres off the ground. Now, based on a 1 to 6 scale figure, and at 32 centimetres long, this represents a dinosaur that would be in life about 1.92 metres in length, which is about on the money for Velociraptor mongoliensis, according to most paleontologists. So we'll dive into this figure and take a closer look. But first, the obligatory reminder about subscribing. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit that notification button to be part of the conversation. Well, let's take a look at this Velociraptor model. Uh, the first point to make is the coloration. This is a very brownish figure. This is a Velociraptor from a desert environment. Now the two species of Velociraptor which have been described so far Mongoliensis from the Jadokta formation and Osmolske from the Bayan Mandahu formation, both those formations represent desert environments. So this brownish coloured, blackish coloured Velociraptor figure is an animal of the desert and it's got a beautiful paint scheme. If we move on now to look at the feathers, here's what I think. It's got lovely quills for display, indicating that Velociraptor was probably a highly social animal that moved around in packs. And it's got a, a dense, shaggy uh, body covering uh, because desert environments would get cold at night and it would need a, a thick coat of feathers to help keep it warm. And then you've got this beautiful long tail with its uh, pinacious, almost... Um, very bird-like primaries, um, which would help this animal balance as it moved around. It would help uh, keep it um, able to turn and manoeuvre rapidly, chasing small prey. And when it jumped and leapt, the, the large tail with its big surface area would probably act as a parachute to help to slow this animal down and make any descents that it was making, any, any dramatic moves, uh, safe for this small, lithe animal. So yes, lots of different feathers, and on the wings we have the beautiful sort of primaries and the coverts that you expect to see on a bird's wing. So lots of different types of integumentary covering associated with this Velociraptor model. A very updated version of Velociraptor with its wonderful feathers. Now let's just have a quick look at those famous toe claws, the second toe raised off the ground. Um, the actual toe is in very good proportion to the rest of the foot and the claw is beautifully recurved and that's reflecting the fossil record. So uh, full marks to collector for their interpretation of the pes, the foot of Velociraptor. Now unfortunately dromaeosaurs running on just two toes on each foot means there's a problem with balance which is why this model has its left arm, the left wing, uh, resting on the ground. That'll give it three points of contact, which will make this figure very stable. And with regards to the wing itself, 
in this work in progress figure, um, I believe that the actual wing will be extended to cover the second digit of, of, of the manus of the hand. So the wing will be extended once they've got it as a fully stable uh, model ready for production. In terms of the fingers, uh, with Maniraptora there's quite a lot of variation within the digits uh, and their digit sizes. But with Velociraptor, it's got long metacarpals and proportionately long digits too, long fingers. And the claws on the ends of those fingers are strongly recurved. So what Collector have done, they've interpreted the model with its uh, fingers uh, not joined, as you might see in other members of the Dromosauridae and Maniraptora, with the second and third digits uh, fused. Uh, they've shown them as separate and they've indicated that they're sort of strong, powerful digits which can be used for grasping prey. So all in all, quite an interesting figure that Collector have devised. Now let's move on to something which is very new and I don't think it's ever been seen in a dinosaur model before, which is um, the cloaca, the vent. Now the pubis is going to be made much deeper and more robust to represent the, the fossil material, but with the cloaca itself, they've been working on it and they're trying to, I believe in this particular model, they're trying to indicate that this vent, uh, the cloaca, it had scent glands in association with it. Now recently there's been some work done with an Ornithischian dinosaur, Cytocosaurus, and associated with its cloaca are indeed scent glands. Now we know there are musk glands associated with crocodilians and within some birds. So why not depict Velociraptor, a highly sociable dinosaur, or at least one that's inferred to be sociable with its pack hunting um, ideas behind it. And then if it's going to be a sociable dinosaur uh, with lots of sophisticated behavior, why doesn't it have a prominent cloaca for visual um, um, signalling perhaps within the pack, but also some musk glands associated with the cloaca so that it can scent mark what would be an extensive territory and use scent to communicate with other members of its pack. And when you've got a huge panaceous tail and you live in a desert environment, being able to scent mark your extensive territory and being able to scent mark uh, and indicate your um, feelings and moods with other members of your pack, that's pretty good. So I believe within the new Velociraptor figure from Collector, they are going to try and indicate the presence of scent glands associated with the cloaca, a slightly swollen area around the vent, a slightly different coloration than the rest of the uh, underside, to demonstrate that this animal may well have had scent glands, just as has been reported recently in the Ornithischian Cytogosaurus. On November the 7th, 1924, the American Museum of Natural History published a short scientific paper written by Henry Fairfield Osborne, which described three types of new theropod dinosaur based on fossils from the Jodoxa formation. The first theropod documented was Velociraptor mongoliensis, its description being based on a skull and jaws, specimen number 6515, along with additional material including the scythe-like second toe claw, although in the paper this was misidentified. It was thought the claw came from the first finger of the hand. Osborne surmised that these fossils represented an alert, swift-moving carnivorous dinosaur, hence the genus name Velociraptor, which translates as swift thief or speedy robber. At the time, Velociraptor was thought to be a diminutive member of the Megalosauridae. Over the last hundred years, more than a dozen Velociraptor mongoliensis specimens have been found. As our understanding of theropod taxonomy has developed, these types of dinosaur, the swift lizards, the dromaeosaurs, are now known to be very distantly related 
to the Meglisol family. The skull fossil was found on August the 11th, 1923, by expedition member Peter Kaysen. Ironically, it was found lying alongside the skull of a protoceratops, protoceratops andrusi, and indeed, ever since, these two dinosaurs, protoceratops andrusi and velociraptor mongoliensis, have been linked together as predator and prey. Perhaps most spectacularly in the remarkable fighting dinosaur specimen that preserves a velociraptor and protoceratops locked in mortal combat. Whilst the new for 2024 collector deluxe velociraptor does not show signs of an encounter with a protoceratops, it does reflect Osborne's original view of this animal, it being an alert, swift moving, carnivorous dinosaur. In addition, the figure reflects some of the very latest research into members of the Maniraptora. In 2023, researchers from the University of Tokyo applied a statistical analysis on forelimb structure that demonstrated that dinosaurs like Velociraptor had a propatagium, a soft tissue structure that joins the wrists and the shoulders. This structure is seen in living, volant birds. It helps with the wing flapping motion and provides a leading edge to the wing. Without this structure, birds could not fly. Velociraptor couldn't fly. So why did it have a propatagium? This has been the subject of much debate amongst paleontologists. Perhaps it had a role in visual display, or maybe it acted as an additional stabiliser as the animal turned swiftly, or perhaps it demonstrated fitness for breeding. It has even been suggested that an enlarged surface area of the forelimb would have been beneficial in helping to shade eggs, or perhaps it played some other role in the brooding process. Whatever the reason or reasons for the propatagium, it's great to see Collector have incorporated some of the very latest research into that commemorative Velociraptor figure. This is one dinosaur that's come a very long way in a hundred years. So that's the third Collector model for 2024 introduced, the Collector Deluxe Velociraptor. Now it will be available from Everything Dinosaur sometime in 2024. We imagine around the middle of the year. We're not quite sure when it will be released, but we promise to keep you informed via our social media pages. Now, Collector have built up an extensive inventory of dinosaur figures, many of which are feathered. And this Velociraptor is the latest in their range to be added. Which brings me to this, our question of the day. What other type of feathered dinosaur would you like Collector to make? Would you like an Ornithomimid perhaps? Or maybe a Therunosaur? Or perhaps a feathered Dromaeosaur, similar to the Velociraptor figure here? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and we'll pass on your views to our chums at Collector. So there you have it, our lowdown on the new Collector Deluxe Velociraptor figure, a model that commemorates 100 years since Velociraptor was first named and described. Now shortly we'll post up our fourth video in this series, providing you with exclusive details of the new Collector Deluxe Polacanthus. Now you can follow Everything Dinosaur on social media, where you can be kept up to date with new model introductions product retirements and other dinosaur and prehistoric animal model news. I suggest you follow Everything Dinosaur on our Facebook page, on Instagram and indeed on our Twitter X feed. We'll post up links to the Collector Deluxe and the Collector Popular Age of Dinosaur figures in the video description down below. So you can peruse these two Collector ranges 
one scale model range and the popular range which is not to scale and perhaps pick up a model or two. We'll also put up a link in the video description to our blog post which provides more information on the new Velociraptor figure. So on that note I'll say I hope you've enjoyed this short video, I hope you've found it informative and one more thing. Thank you.